Hello, hello, hello. Good to see ya. Feels a little late. A little tardy. Maybe it's my fault. I don't know. Feels like I'm a little tardy. We're going to wait for folks to catch up on Facebook. Always those notifications go out a little slowly. Come on back, Thor. A good boy you are. No, no, don't go on. He's under. Hello again, Terry Lynn. Hey, bud. Pe peeps want to see you, man. Why are you under there? Poor dog. Hi, Will. Hi, Felicity. Hi, Donald. Hi, Gene. couple of shares and we'll be hauling the mail. Yeah, Thor's not going to be around today. He, he's looking a little sad. He, he's just not on board. He's just not on board. Watch me spill this pop. Ugh. All right, today... We might actually finish Good Friday. I'm looking forward to it, and I know you are too. We're in Matthew 27, and we have our Lord headed to the cross. So a couple of shares, and we'll be hauling the mail. I'm telling you, he's like... Hi, Bobby Joe. Hi, Jennifer. Thor's just like, you know what? I'm out. I'm under the covers. See, he's nothing but, he's nothing but a little bump. Um, just, I'm done. No Thor today, obviously. I'm sorry about that. Um, he's just not on board today. He's just not on board today. Or maybe he is bored. I don't know. There are a lot of people in the building today. There's a youth rummage sale this weekend. And with that many people in the building, we can guarantee that he will be popping up in no time to, uh, to patrol. So we will get some, we will get some of my little buddy. Um, remember also that this is a conversation. This isn't a, um, uh, this isn't a, monologue and so you're free feel free to chime in at any time with um any observations questions comments that you have um concerning this uh looks like a all right good good let's um there there he is like i said on patrol hey buddy you want to come back all right hi maggie Thor is on patrol. We stopped yesterday. We stopped yesterday in the middle of uh, Jesus's trek to the to the cross. Verse thirty-five. Uh, Simon has been um, roped into carrying his cross. He's not really on board with that. Jesus has been. And he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone like a freight train gone like yesterday. He's gone. He's under there. All right. Um, hey, buddy. Want a treat? All right. So they were... Um, uh, when they had crucified him, this means nails in his hands and feet, they divided his garments, um, throwing clay on. They threw lots. They could have thrown dice. Either of those two things might be how they went about um, dividing his garments. Okay? So, um, 
I want you to take note of this, okay? The high priest tears his garments uh, that basically um, that Jesus, uh, the high priest tears his garments when Jesus confesses himself to be the Christ. Um, directly forbidden by, script, by the Holy Scripture. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Jesus is clothes are not torn. This is a high priest who keeps the law. High bath who keeps the law for us. So, um, you know, if you, if you, uh, uh, if you want to know who this, this, this guy is, he's the guy who keeps the law. Um, Beth, we are praying for you. you. Are you are you visiting us from the hospital, Beth? Uh, love you. I love the com- I love the commitment. I might have misunderstood that text, but all right. Um. So the high priest tears his garments. Jesus does not. Jesus does not. This is Hilary of of Poitiers. That they distribute his clothes by casting lots for them rather than by cutting them up signifies the eternal incorruptibility of Christ's body. The life and salvation of all things was hung on the tree of life with a thief on his left and a thief on his right. This demonstrates that the entire human race is called to the mystery of our Lord's suffering. Love that. I love that. And over his head uh, was hung um, an ition. Um, that is a sign or the charge having been written. This is Jesus King of the Jews. When you see I N R I, okay, um, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty excited. The Pellegrinis are here. I'm I'm glad. Um, Sue, are you still locked down? Are they? Are, is everyone still locked down over there? All right. Anyway, while you answer, Sue, I will continue on. Love the Pellegrinis. Big fans. Um. The charges above his head, if you ever see this, I-N-R-I, that's Jesus Nazarenus Rex Eudiorum, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, Rex Eudiorum. So above his head is written, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Um, whether in pretense or in truth, says origin, all literature whether Greek, Roman, or Hebrew, gives evidence of his kingdom. And in place of a crown over his head is written, this is the of Jesus, the king of the Jews. There's no other reason for his death, nor was there, than he was the king of the Jews. He spoke about this and said, I have been made king by him on Zion, his holy mountain. And while the chief priests and keeping of the letter of the law wore on his head, a type of sign with the petal bearing inscription, the holiness of the Lord, the true chief priest and king, the sign on the cross, the sign of his head reads, the king of the Jews. Origin, bang on, rocking it in his commentary on Matthew. So while the Pharisees are wearing on their heads um, the king of the Jews, He has the sign of the charge on his head. He has the sign of the charge on his head. And having been crucified with him to las lace tie, those are robbers or bandits, bandits, highwaymen. So this sort of hints that this is the name given um, muggers on the way as well. Um, one on his left, one on his right, Dexion, and one on his left.
one on his right and one on his left. I am... Oh, that's not helping me at all. Um, need to... Uh, I wanted to take a look at the Latin for a second. Um, one on his right and one on his left. Two thieves. Okay. Okay. Um, they divide his garments and they sit down and watch. And Pastor Finker's right. He is crucified for who he is. Who he is. The king of the Jews. He is crucified for being our king. Oh, Sue, I'm going to pray for you. A huge uptick of uh, because of the protests. We're going to be praying for you. I was worried about that. I was really, really worried about that. I was really worried about that. Um, just so that you all um, know this, this is Pastor Finker who joined me on Higher, the Higher Things video short today um, talking about the Athanasian Creed sporting his super cool beard. Two robbers crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, judging him, uh, shaking their heads. Kenu on test, Keneo. So they shook their heads at him, saying, He destroyed others. Uh, I'm sorry, the one who would destroy the temple. And in three days, build it back up again. Save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Now, I want you to, I want you to sort of think this through. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. That is reminiscent of something else that we heard. Um, we heard, we heard this when, when he was crucified. When he was tempted, we heard um, all of this before when they said, um, if you are the son, when, when Satan said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones that they would become um, bread. You know, if you are the son of God, there's certain things that follow. And. Um, and. They. They. None of this happens. He doesn't, he doesn't listen to Satan. So here, when he wants you to believe most in him, as he dies on the cross for all your sins, as Pastor Finker said, this is a reprise of Matthew 4. As he's doing that, begging for you to believe that he is saving you, Satan, through the mouth of those who were mocking him, blaspheming him, says, if you are the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones as to be... Uh, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. If that's who you are, then come down from the cross. Come down from the cross. If you're the son of God, come down from the cross. And that's all that he's wanted. For you to believe in him. And they offer faith for him to come down from the cross. That's what they offer. They offer him faith for him to come down from the cross. Mm, mm, mm. Just, I'm just, it just, it just should tear you up. You know, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. 
Other people are punished for what they actually do. This one is crucified for who he actually is. He didn't do anything wrong. And yet, here he hangs on the cross, answering for your sins and the sins of the whole world. Found the Latin for you. There's Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Right there in the Latin. All right. Wagging their heads. Come down from the cross. 41. Also, just as the high priest, the, I'm sorry, the chief priest, um, ridiculed him with the scribes and the elders, saying, He saved others. There's that fun word, sozo. He saved others. Um, he is not able to save himself. Uh, he is the king of Israel. If that is so, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. And, and here they trust, they, they, they quote, they, they quote the psalmist. He, 43, he trusts in God. Let God deliver him if he wills it, if he wills him. For he said, I am, I, I am the son of God. Theos, Amy, Uios. I am the son of God. I just, Bobby Joe, what'd you get? I want to hear what you got. But the, but I want, I want, I want you to sort of take this in. They're quoting scripture. They're calling him the son of God. They're saying all of these things. Now it's cheating to go to Luke, but he forgives them. He forgives them and he puts the best construction on their behavior. Again, my buddy uh, Finker will, will throw the penalty flag on me here, but I don't want you to miss this. They sure seem like they know what's going on. They sure seem like they know who he is, taunting him from the foot of the cross. And who has his back? Does Peter? No. No. Does Judas? No. No. Do the disciples? They fled. Who has his back? Some women uh, um, at the foot of the cross. Mama. I mean, people you would exp I mean, nobody important. Like in the purple shirt. And Finker's right. Because what's coming is not even his dad has his back. He is all alone on the cross. In Matthew's gospel. In John's gospel, he says, "My dad, my, I'm not alone. My dad's with me. And again, he refuses, like the Canaanite dog woman, he refuses to believe that anybody other than, well, John's not here in this gospel, but I know what you're saying. John's at the foot of the cross, but can he do anything? Can he? Can they do anything to fix this? A good observation, Will. You're rocking it, man. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Nice gift to this Bible study. All right. 44. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now, Luke's gospel says that one of them turned midway through. Luke's gospel says that one of them repents midway through and decides this, this is no bueno. This is no good. Um, but right now, At this point, just keep it on. Everybody's piling on. You know what? Everybody is virtue signaling 
by joining with the people who are blaspheming, except for a few, I mean, nobodies, literally deplorables. Forty-five, and it was, uh, um, and it happened in the ninth hour. I'm sorry. Now I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oops. Let's let's slow down, you crazy child, and read the text. From the um, sixth hour, darkness happened. Thank you. Um, over all of the earth until the. Ninth hour. I looked down and saw ninth hour, and my eyes did all sorts of things other than what I needed to do, which was um, take it word for word. I I'm sure your eyes do that too. Um, oops. How about I uh, put the text on for you? So there you go. So um, from the sixth hour happened over all the earth darkness until the ninth hour. Thank you, Carol. I got it. I'm on it. And about the ninth hour, um, Jesus cried out with a mega la voice, a big voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, which is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why have you forsaken me? Now even, now even dad is gone. Some of the bystanders hearing these, hearing it said this, this one's calling Elijah. I mean, Ili, Ili, Lena, Sabachthani, I guess if you, you know, sounds like it. And so immediately, um, one out of them ran and taking a um, spagon, spagon, uh, which is a sponge filled with sour wine, placed it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Well, Terry Lynn, I mean, this is the height of his suffering. It's only an odd question if you take it as, well, I've never taken it as an, as an odd question because I've never taken it as perhaps doubt, which I don't think this is. I think this is, I don't deserve this. And now even my dad has turned his back on me. And I want you to sort of contemplate this for just a wee bit that the father turns his back on the son so that the father will never turn his back on you. The father abandons his son so that in Christ, the father will never abandon you. When you look up and at the universe and are like, um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or where are you in my time of need? Know that he's there, but he's not there because you're such a good person. He's there because of the cross of Christ. And when, with that outside of you-ness of the gospel, or in the Latin, extra nos, while, while that, with that outside of you-ness of the gospel, you have a, an ending comfort that it doesn't depend upon you for God to be pro you, it rests upon Jesus, Jesus alone. It all hangs on him as he hangs for you on the cross. While you are contemplating what your sins caused, that your sins caused this, Contemplate the sweet swap that Pastor Lestico points you to. Terry Lynn, that's that's not a bad observation. He 
he knows what's going on, but he's quoting scripture. And obviously, Terry Lynn, this is for our sake. He says these words for our sake. So that we will know and take comfort that God will never abandon us because he turned his back on his son. Just looking at quotes from um, different church fathers. Why does he speak this way, crying out, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, says Chrysostom, that they might see that to his last breath he honors God as his father and is no adversary of God. He spoke with the voice of Scripture, utterly, uh, uttering a cry from a psalm. Thus, even to his last hour, he is found bearing witness to the sacred text. He offers this prophetic cry in Hebrew so as to be to be plain and intelligible to them as and by th by all things Jesus shows by shows he is one mind with the father who has begotten him. I always find it interesting when the church fathers find something totally different from mine or uh, from from um, from modern scholars. OK, I'm focusing in on. He's not going to abandon you. But he says this for Terry Lynn. Um, and Chrysostom in the 6th century is saying, look how he quotes scripture. To the end. Different preachers from different times with different emphasis um, on every syllable. But every syllable is important. Every syllable is important. Psalm 22. I should do a whole Bible study on, on Psalm 22. You just want to see whether or not my Hebrew is as good as my Greek, James Lestico. All right. Um, continuing on. It's not, by the way. Um, sight read Greek. Can't sight read Hebrew. I need I need vocabulary. Vo uh, Hebrew is composed mainly of vocabulary. The grammar of Hebrew I have down. The vocab, uh, not so well. But, you know, we can do something if you wish sometime. Uh, 47. That doesn't mean I don't teach from the Hebrew. I do. But it just takes a considerable more amount of time. Okay? Um, a preparation. 47. I like it. It's not the only reason. Um, sponges in the ancient world were used to clean um, holes that people use the bathroom in. So you... Where has a sponge been? You know, it's a poopy sponge. And that's what they give him to drink so that he can cry out with a loud voice and yield up his spirit. This is how for you he is. He's down to your smelly parts and he's redeeming the whole of you. Every last bit. The dogs are surrounding him. Bones are countable, counted with sinners, numbered with transgressors. Isaiah 53. I was reminded of, um, who was our little Jewish vicar, former Jew vicar, Jewish vicar? Um, was that... Um, which one was the, um, oh, uh, gosh, what was his name, Erica? He's a vicar now. Um, he's finishing up his vicar. What a great kid. But he, when he, when he taught a Bible study um, here at my church, very clearly said that he was not allowed to read Isaiah 53 growing up as a little um, Jewish boy because they prohibited it. Because if you read Isaiah 53, you'll become a Christian. can't remember his name. I just can't remember his name. Brad Singer. Thank you, Erica. What a great kid. But what a profound statement. We're not allowed to read Isaiah 53 growing up 
um, because of that. Wait, based one of the other said the loy poi. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Leave him be. Leave him alone. Um, uh, so we could see if he's if Elijah comes to save him. Uh, Ninety six uh, percent um, Mediterranean Jew. 3% plus or minus 3% Mediterranean Jew is what I am, Cindy. Thanks for your concern. Um, very, very good. And you make sure, Cindy, that you tell your vicar hello for us. We, we love and miss him. Um, what a young, what a great young kid. Um, one of the benefits that Higher Things has from being an RSO is that they get to have summer vicars from the seminary, which are first year students who need work and they need experience. And so we give them work and experience by allowing them to um, serve at our conferences. And they get the great experience of doing youth ministry to 2,500 kids. And um, we get to learn, uh, learn from them and to teach them. It's mutually beneficial. Okay. All right. But they don't get to see Elijah show up because Jesus, again, crying out with a great voice, gave up his spirit. I mean, he died. And let's be absolutely clear on this. The Romans know how to kill people. They know how to break things. All right. He did not escape death on the cross. They know how to kill him. The idea that he somehow held his breath and did not die is just wrong. Um, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. It's terribly wrong. Doesn't mess with the evidence. He's pierced in John's gospel, blood and water flow, evidence of death. But even the idea that he somehow did not die when they crucified him, and that's what they do, is absurd. So 100% of, of Roman uh, criminals um, aren't who, who, um, who are crucified died, except for this one? He died because he had to die to save you. And not because God has to do something. It's that this is what, this is the only way to save you. The only way to save you. God, if God could have come up with a different way to save as many people as possible, he, don't you think he would have? Don't you think he would have? He's God after all. I love it when people try to come up with ways that God can save more people than he does. Like he doesn't sit around for all eternity trying to figure out how to save as many people as possible. Well, if he had to put the tree in the garden, well, you could take that up with him. But he put that tree there in order to save you. No, no, we're, we're not going there, Lestico. We are acknowledging your personal comments concerning my intelligence. But nevertheless, um, the, um, uh, Pastor Lestico is my friend. He's just kidding. But the, but I want you to be sure of this. He was crucified for your sin. He will be raised for your justification your forgiveness before the Father. His death His death is the propitiation, the sacrifice that makes you acceptable to God. His death does that. His death alone does that.
You want to save yourself? Why is he dying? You think you could fix this on your own? Why is he crucified? You got what it takes to make it right with God? Balance the scales? Why Jesus? This moment is what creation has been moving to since before the foundation of the world. To save you and me from our sin. And everyone who calls on his name shall be saved. Yielded up his spirit. And you do behold the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top of it to the bottom and the earth shook and the pet tri split and the tombs were opened and many of the somata bodies of the Holy One came out. Who had fallen asleep came out. They raised. And coming out of their tombs after his resurrection, after his rising, they went into the holy city and appeared Epiphany, polois, too many. And the centurion, the Ekaton Tarkos, and those with him, Terontes. This is very important. This word we have used over and over again in this gospel. I have tried to teach you this word. In fact, I've tried to teach you this word every time the word keep is used in Matthew's gospel. It is either phulaso to guard or toreo to guard. That's what this word means. And so when you hear whoever loves me keeps my commandments, it's this word. Keep means guard, to watch, to think is an important thing to do. So what do they do? Those who are keeping watch over him, 54, to those who are guarding him, keeping him. See, if you love me, you'll keep my words does not mean if you love me, um, you'll obey my words. It means my, you'll watch my words. You'll, you'll care about your words. Hi, Brenda. Good to see you. Truly, this was the Son of God. They're the ones that are watching Jesus. They said, seeing the earthquake, the seismon, and what was taking place, they in fe- were greatly afraid, passive, saying, truly, God's Son. This one was. This one's the son of God. In Mark's gospel, he had shut them up. Nobody calls Jesus the son of God in, in Mark's gospel. He shuts them all down. Only two demons get sentences out about him being the son of God. We know who you are. And then when he's dead, he can't stop anybody from opening their mouth about him. This was the son of God. Past tense, not present tense. There were many Gunaikas, there were many women there, looking on from uh, from a distance. I should be able to sing that. Apo Um Who 
who had followed Jesus from Galilee, serving him. Um, among them was Mary, Miriam, Miriam Magdalena, that's Mary Magdalene, and Miriam and Mary, the mother of Jacobu, jo, uh, uh, that's James, and Joseph, um, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> oh, that joke never gets old. And when, it ha when evening happened, there came a rich man from Arimathea, uh, whose name was jo uh, Joseph, who also um, was a disciple of Jesus. Not just singing, Cindy, but I sang that in a different language. Um, and they went to Pilate, asking for the Soma to Yesu, the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered it to be given to them, Apodothenai. And taking the body of Jesus and wrapping it in a clean um, linen shroud, 60, and laying it in a kino, in his own kino, new tomb, which had been cut in the Petra, in the rock. He rolled up a megalolithon, a big stone, at the door of the tomb and went away. Leaving, verse 61, Mary, Miriam, Magdalene, and the other Mary sitting opposite of the tomb. No, I'm running out of time, but I did start two minutes late. Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple, places Jesus' dead corpse in a tomb that nobody had been in before. Now remember, family tombs in the ancient world um, were usually cut into places in the sides of mountains. And you and you would and you would have basically um, like a like a table. And um, a, a slab, and you'd have a bunch of other urns there, and whoever died last was like on the slab, and like when somebody else in the family died, they would take the body's remains and they would put it in one of the jars or one of the containers, and they would place the next person there. Well, this is a tomb that nobody has ever used hallowing all our graves after this. There's not time to prepare the body because of the Sabbath. Can you imagine Mary Magdalene and Mary's pain sitting opposite of the tomb and knowing that he's in there and they can't finish and do what's proper for him? Not until Sunday. We're going to finish this chapter. 62. The next day, Saturday, which was the day of preparation. The Sabbath. The next day, which is the day of preparation. Look at them, the chief priests gathering together and the Pharisees going to Pilate on the Sabbath, working on the Sabbath because they got to make sure. See, look, here's the deal. If you kill the son of God, you've got to make sure that that guy stays dead. You can't have him popping out of the tomb. So they go on the Sabbath day where they're not supposed to be doing any work. And they go and they want to make sure that Jesus stays dead. Because it's not enough to kill him. you got to make sure he stays dead. Or that the disciples don't see the body. 
Lord, they say, Master, remember that, um, uh, remember how that um, planos, that deceiver, they're talking about Jesus, while he was zoning, zoned, while he was living, said, after three days I will rise. They know he said he will rise. They know it. But they will do whatever they can to prevent it. And Pastor Lester goes right on on the seventh day Jesus rested and that's the day he laid in the tomb. He said, I will, after three days, he'll, I'll rise. Command, um, get command, so, and so command, um, the tomb to be, the grave to be made secure until the third day. Last, um, his disciples coming and clepped so sin, stealing his body and telling the people he has risen from the dead. And this last, this escate plano, this last deception will be worse than the first. What I love about the Gospels is how they lay out all of it. Okay? If this was a fake document, if they were just making stuff up, they would not include that the, the, the Jews thought that Jesus' was body would be stolen. Okay? They wouldn't do it. But because this actually happened, because this is an account that actually happened, because the gospel writers actually received the word, God breathed. Because this document actually happened, it's historical. They include in it parts that you would not include. Like the unfaith of the disciples. And, in this case, the, um, the fears of the Pharisees that they're going to steal the body. And Pilate said, you could just hear in Pilate's voice, that he, in, in Violet's words, that he just wants nothing to do with them. He knows what they're, what they're about. He wants absolutely nothing to do with them. Who would? Clergy. They're the worst. Um, you have guards. You have custodian. You have custodians. See to it. Go away and make it as secure as you, as you can, as you want, as you see, as you know how to do. And so... They went out and made secure. There's Falizzo, uh, As Falizzo, the tomb, sealing the stone with guards of soldiers. And that ends chapter 27 with Jesus having suffered like you suffer, having died like you die, and having been buried like you will be buried. He has taken on all that's you. And in his death, he has redeemed it all. To save you and me. And we now we're left with, on, on Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, with a tomb guarded. with a tomb guarded by soldiers from the Pharisees and teed up for tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel. But while you're sort of preparing for Saturday, uh, remember to go to, to your uh, favorite app store, whether it be Google or Amazon or um, iTunes. Do a search for Higher Things Lutheran. And you will find our app, which will push all our content to your phone or iPad or Amazon Kindle device. Chapter 28 tomorrow. I don't know if we'll finish it. 
We will not have Bible study on Wednesday, on, on Monday. I'm taking the day off. Uh, but we will come close to finishing the gospel soon. And what we do after that, who knows? I'm Pastor Borkart and the Sleeping Pooch. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe.